All right, what's up, guys? Today we're going to do a review, quick review on The Batman with Robert Pattinson, which, make sure this thing's focused. All right. Hey, which I thought was pretty good. I thought it was well done. My favorite Batman, full disclosure, in that series is with uh, Christian Bale for the Christopher Nolan Batmans of going into Batman Begins and really just showing him take on that ninja just really wanted to understand what was going on and had a passion and, and an intensity and a, a desire and drive to do something about this criminal element that uh, you know was responsible for his parents passing away. So Batman Begins and all that trilogy was my favorite because it really dug into that ninja mode of Batman. You know, he's not just a dude, he's a very talented, skilled man with expertise and um, experience in this kind of thing. So I just love that about that movie. And this one really didn't go into it. It was more of a, okay, this is the, the story, it's moving, you know, it's moving along. It kind of went back to the what happened to his parents. Obviously, of course, it's going to share something like that. It's part of Batman and who it is. Yet, it just got into this detective mode. It showed him and Detective Gordon working on solving this, this uh, following them and solving this series of these challenges uh, that were being brought up, right? So it kind of hopped into that. Um, and it was, it was a good story. I enjoyed it. I thought the characters were well done. And I thought, I want to comment on Robert Pattinson. I actually thought he did an okay job. When it was first announced that he was going to be Batman, it was kind of questionable. Like, well, you know, there's this persona of him being this, this vampire kind of uh, Twilight character or whatever. That was, and that was a while back. That was years and years back. And so we've got this, this reference point, this image of him in our mind of, of that kind of character. And it kind of bleeds over a little bit. Yet... He's older, and so this Batman, he, he's bulked up a little bit, and he had to do some kind of training. I didn't really look into it much, but he had to do some kind of training because he does somewhat fit that kind of role of looking like a younger, uh, growing into Batman type of character. This, this lone recluse, this billionaire, he might not have too many people that he can even relate with because his, his reality is just so far beyond what most people ever experience, uh, being this billionaire uh, type of character that, you know, maybe that's just what it is. But uh, the thing about the director, I read that he was listening to Nirvana and kind of just thinking about this kind of recluse type of character. And so if you per picture Batman in that persona, I thought he did well. He already kind of had that kind of fit to it and just being this, not this super, like, you know, bodybuilding kind of Batman, but this just this guy that uh, knows how to handle himself. He's got the resources to back it up and is just really in this kind of, he's almost in this brooding kind of uh, intensity about what he's, he's going to do, right? You know, I am vengeance. This kind of response that he gives to the dudes that he's fighting. And so I can kind of understand that, you know, his parents got took out and that sucks, right? And so he's, he's on this, this detective mode and he did a good job portraying that. For the action and the rest of the movie, the cinematography was well done. Obviously now it seems like the cinematography is just so well done on so many movies. It's almost not even a, a thing. But some movies do it better than others. And so this, this, uh, this theme or this vibe of this kind of dark and gritty environment this ambiance of, of that that style it was really well done for that kind of portraying the world that they're in for the action and the fighting and stuff like that it was more basic look nothing <laughs> the action standard these days is raised to a level that is man it is something to keep up with and so you've got this movie where it's just this Batman character that's not really going too off on everybody. You know, he's got some moves, he can handle himself, but I'm just picturing his gloves or whatever he's got are reinforced with something. You know, you, how many right hands do you have to see just punching some dudes and they're out? 
before it's kind of like, and that wasn't all of it, but it's kind of like, okay, something's going on there. You know, he's not this super martial art master, which some of the Batmans seems like was uh, part of it, one of the comics. I really don't know the history of it. I can't really comment on it, but him being a martial artist. So in this movie, it wasn't really like that. He was just, you know, this kind of guy that can, can handle himself, but it seemed like I pictured he had some kind of brass knuckles or something built into his gloves. So he could just work these dudes over. And uh, so it, it was okay. I didn't feel like it was quite up to the standard, but the, he got the job done. And it played out smooth enough for a, a more like moving into Batman type of character. He's not fully, fully Batman yet. He's moving into the Batman character. So it was well done enough. And let's see, what else is on there? Um, all the different characters, I enjoyed it. I thought uh, Colin Farrell did a, a really good job as, as his role. And then Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. I enjoyed her as Catwoman. I really love seeing them riding the motorcycles together. That was one of my favorite parts of the whole movie. There were some cool scenes. There was a driving scene that, was, that I enjoyed that was uh, a little kick of intensity, up the notches a little bit to it. You know, that did kind of something. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot. It was more of the detective mode. But there was a couple scenes like that that were cool that added something to it as far as like some pace and some intensity and some action to it. Uh, but this scene of them riding their motorcycles together, I saw that and I was just like, ah, I love that. I really love that. And I like that kind of dynamic. It makes me think of the movie that I want to create could have something really awesome like that in there. Maybe some kind of romance and some kind of, I don't want to say Mad Max, because something I would want to create would be a different level, but some kind of dynamic with motorcycles specifically. Yeah, the whole vehicle situation, that's cool, but more with motorcycles. And the way they did that was very brief. It was very brief. But I really liked that, that he was, at the first of the movie, he was on the motorcycle, just riding around on his motorcycle, right? And then later on, it's like, oh, okay, now he's in it. And that was when he was in civilian mode, kind of like tracking people and seeing what's going on, playing detective or whatever. But then later on, him and Catwoman, seeing them really blasting off, and they're both on their motorcycles. I just love that. And I would love to see some more stuff like that. Hint, hint. If any directors or anybody is watching this like that, I would love to see some more stuff like that, some more vehicle stuff. Like, gosh, um, Ken Block, Jim Connor, all that drifting, that's super tight. I would love to see some stuff like that. And there was a little bit of that in, uh, what was that, Black Light with Liam Neeson. There were some pretty cool automotive scenes. So they had a little bit of that in The Batman. Um, it's more of this detective mode, kind of watching them follow the progression. I would say that anybody that's got the ideas of the, the bad guy, what he's doing, and trying to rile up all these people to get out there doing all this stuff and they're tripping, you know, got their masks on, they're doing all this stuff. You know, I just, I rebuke the enemy and the thoughts of the enemy of whatever that is that could be trying to work through people, whether that's you, whether that's me or whoever, I just rebuke that in Jesus name. Because I really think that if we don't pay attention to how we're going to hold our attitude and our mindset, it can slip into stuff like that. And too many people allow that kind of stuff to slip into you know, who they are and what they decide to do. And so then we've got all this trouble and all this chaos because people are going out there maybe doing whatever, whatever it is that they're doing. That it's just really unnecessary. And I'm gonna talk about that more in a future video for um, that Liam Neeson movie. What was it? Um, Memory. I'm gonna talk more about that in that movie. Anyway, I love some of that stuff that was going on in the Batman. It was a little bit long, uh, three hours. One time in the theater was enough to watch that. I put this off for so long, I saw it in March. Uh, I put this off for so long that it's not even gonna be in theater anymore. And whatever. If you got to see it, let me know what your thoughts are. I'm curious what they are and what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, and feel free to share. So,
beside that, there's something else I wanted to share. It's May 2nd, 2022. And all these movies and shows and stuff are fun. That's great. But it's like, we can learn from that and we can level up maybe what type of character we want to be or what kind of story or progression or mission that we're on. Yeah, I think we really need to take it seriously that we bring this back to God. And this could be like a public service announcement that I just kind of sprinkle into every video where some kind of something talking about God, bringing it back to Christ is really what it's about. And so just to point it back to him and say, for whatever it is in my life or our lives in general, that he gets the glory for and just say hallelujah and glory to God because he has led me through so many things and he can lead you through so many things if we are faithful to him and keep him first. So we need to bring it back to him and keep him in the focus. Which brings me to this day. Let's see, what does this say? This daily devotional thing. Talking about John the Baptist. And it says, the world thinks that Christians are weirdos and laughs at what we believe about God. Right? But we bear the reproach of Christ gladly and pray that we will be faithful in the desert in which we have been placed. Ooh, that one speaks to me because I'm physically in the desert. It's not just spiritual metaphor kind of level. Physically, I'm in the desert. So that speaks to me as I watch God lead me through this process of uh, being humbled and leveling up in that humility and really learning to keep him first and it's just a beautiful it's such a beautiful wonderful thing to keep god first and not just watching some sermons here and there reading a little bit of the bible but to go and really be part of church and open up your heart to serving for real it takes it to a different level like if you've thought about something like that go find out go find out not just going to church and keeping the chair warm, but like going and really seeking for some kind of knowledge and wisdom that God can use to change and renew your mind and change you and watch that impact play out in your life, right? It's beautiful. And so the question that's with uh, the daily devotional thing, soul search, your question for the day, am I faithful to my calling? right so we've got this idea that there's a calling there's a prompting there is a decision node if you will that we have to either accept or not there's a calling on your life whoever you are that's watching this there's a calling on your life and it's got to do with keeping god first yet the acceptance is up to you there's a decision node that you have to decide yes i want to get closer to god or whatever and if you just say whatever, things are going to keep going around and around and around in that same type of pattern until that pattern is broken. And that pattern is broken and reshaped and remolded in a better one with God. So you, if you choose no, you can just keep living out that existence of the pattern repeating itself. Unless you say, yes, I do want to get closer to God and find out what that calling is. And watch those changes happen and take place not that there's not challenges yet the acceptance and the moving forward in that direction is the important priority to really stir to the surface to bring that up to the surface because from there to accept that calling and this is right right going along with what we're doing at church which is funny to me to accept that and to go into this kind of preparation, healing, growth, renewing of the mind, drawing closer to God, letting go of, of the stuff that just needs to be let go of. Right? Right there. Let go. Let God. To go through this preparation phase is just so beautiful of a thing as well. Because it leads to this separation of, like the eagle has to leave the nest. It has to learn how to fly. It won't be able to use its full strength and become like the full Batman or whatever unless it's tested, right? So this this growth and then leading to this separation of what the roots were to go where it's meant to go 
that calling and that acceptance is 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 begging for for faithfulness from you and from me from us right and the prayer is father help me to number my days and to use my time wisely I've really felt that that the older I get I've got to do something with my life I've got to take these dreams and these these goals and the vision I feel that like God has given me in business with internet marketing with real estate investing and just really take it seriously and push it to a professional serious just standard of excellence where the market feels the impact of love and grace of God by the grace of God with Christ working through me and fulfilling that calling right so I challenge you to question <clears throat> what that is for you excuse me it's getting late I'm just getting tired and it's we've been singing and playing at band practice and just all kinds of stuff and so I challenge you <clears throat> to think about that for yourself right what is that calling it's like Jonah it's called to go to Nineveh go to this city and do this stuff right tell them and He's like, no, no, I'm going to go get on a boat. I'm going to go do something else. Well, it didn't work out too well. He had to come back to what he was supposed to be doing. It had to do with God. It had to, keep, it had to do with keeping God first and going along with that, submitting to that, humbling himself to that, and <clears throat> I don't know where I'm going with this. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. But the movie was good with Batman. There was a mission that he was on. And the mission that we're on, we've got to take seriously while we're here. Right? We can't just put it off. Because our days are numbered. And although these movies are great, we got to do something more than that. Right? We have to. We have to be able to give back and to take this mission that we're on and the calling that we're on seriously. And... I don't know what else to say other than that for tonight. I got some other stuff I'm gonna do later with YouTube, so check back if you want. And let me know your comments. Let's take this stuff seriously, what we need to do with our life. Maybe get some kind of influence and inspiration from Batman, but the rest let's get from God. Peace.